All right, I guess we can get going. Uh, my name is uh, Dimitar Ivanov. I'm a manager of technology architecture in the CTO office in uh, TELUS. Uh, Michael Back is a technology architect in the team. And uh, between the two of us, we will uh, uh, share our experience with uh, this uh, private cloud uh, proof of concept with uh, Red Hat, Cisco, uh, NetApp, uh, using uh, the Red Hat uh, OpenStack platform uh, as our cloud manager and using uh, Cisco. Uh, in uh, NetApp using Flexbot as our uh, infrastructure. Uh, so quickly, uh, quickly on the agenda. So, um, you know, why we doing private cloud, uh, what design criteria and approach we came up with, uh, how we selected the technology and the partners. Uh, Michael will uh, talk about the uh, actual technical implementation of the, uh, uh, of the proof of concept. And in the end, um, I'll cover some uh, next step and some, uh, uh, the next steps and some uh, kind of general thoughts on uh, uh, um, on OpenStack and how we can help uh, the community uh, and OpenStack grow. Um, so quickly on the background, uh, I will uh, uh, just roll back uh, about two years ago, early in 2013. Um, you know, at that time, Telus uh, was um, um, obviously, um, you know, already uh, highly virtualized. Uh, we were, we densified, we consolidated. Uh, we were ripping off all the benefits from, uh, from virtualization, uh, let's put it that way. Um, so one um, area that we weren't, uh, you know, very happy with was the, uh, the, the state of our infrastructure delivery. Um, it was uh, fairly slow, uh, unpredictable, uh, inconsistent. Uh, you know, we had one of these uh, kind of typical request-based system where, you know, somebody would, uh, you know, put in a request, we would, uh, go and, um, um, you know, a designer will take that, they will um, go come up with a, with a solution um, and, and get a number of deployment teams involved to, you know, go deploy this thing. And uh, the end result, as I, say, is, as I said, slow, uh, unpredictable, inconsistent, um, you know, all of this. So we wanted to change all that, right? Uh, we wanted to uh, kind of what we uh, envisioned at the time would be, uh, you know, we wanted to have this, uh, you know, a nice portal, uh, services catalog, you know, go, you know, select a bunch of uh, uh, items, one or two or three from, from the catalog that you need. Uh, you know, you click the select button and you get those, uh, um, those provisions very, very quickly. Um, so we kicked off a project, uh, we called it end-to-end uh, -end automated provisioning. Um, and by the way, end-to-end, um, -end, we didn't want it, you know, just to be the, um, you know, just the compute tier, uh, but, um, you know, the entire scope of the uh, of infrastructure services with uh, networking, storage, um, you know, firewalling, load balancers, all that. Um, so, uh, we kicked off the project. Uh, we, uh, we selected uh, uh, an OpenStack-based uh, uh, um, uh, automation tool set. Um, uh, and I'll just roll back, uh, not roll back, but, uh, you know, fast forward, for, uh, forward rather to kind of almost two years towards the end of... Uh, uh, 2014, um, and you know by that time uh, we uh, we achieved some pretty good results. So first of all, we learned a lot, right? We learned a lot about technology, uh, but uh, I think what's most importantly, we learned a lot about our organization in terms of uh, you know the processes and the um, uh, the organization itself, our processes. Kind of we realized very quickly uh, in that uh, um, in that process that. Uh, you know, every team knew what, uh, uh, what they were doing. Uh, they knew how they were interfacing with, uh, with other teams, but nobody had an end-to-end -end picture of what that process actually uh, looked like. So that was very positive. We actually learned that, documented that. Uh, that, was, uh, um, that was great. Um, so we also, we also demonstrated that we can, um, you know, we can do uh, automation for some, uh, uh, for some very simple uh, use cases. Um, at the same time, uh, you know, we, uh, we realized that um, this approach was uh, kind of, we faced uh, quite a few challenges and, uh, and limitations. So, um, you know, in essence, what we're trying to do was to, you know, transform a legacy, um, I wouldn't call it a legacy, uh, but a traditional IT, uh, IT environment uh, for delivery of cloud services. Um, and what we found uh, was that, you know, first off, it requires this, you know, fairly complex integration, not fairly, like very complex integration, uh, you know, between our, the automation tool set and, um, you know, the variety of, um, 
uh, management tools that we had in the environment. Uh, you know, all the ones that I have on the screen, um, IP address management, resource reservation, capacity planning, all of those. So uh, that wasn't the only thing, though. If, even if you, um, you know, if you manage to, um, you know, to do that integration, uh, then we have to go and uh, kind of live with it. it, it, it is, so we, we, we found that it's, uh, it is uh, also very difficult to maintain it uh, because we created uh, you know, a number of interdependencies between, between tools that were managed by different teams. They were owned by different vendors. Some of them were you know, internally developed. Um, so that, uh, that, again, was another challenge. And even if you did all that, um, you know, you haven't done any, uh, you know, we haven't done any automation yet. Um, you know, you just kind of built our automation framework. Now we have to start building uh, or creating, um, you know, fairly complex workflows on top of that in order to be able to, um, you know, to do the actual automation. And the reason we have to go through, um, you know, all that uh, trouble uh, was, um, if I can only make this thing work, uh, if I knew how, there you go. Uh, yes, it is this bullet point right, uh, right here. Uh, it, you know, it has to do with the fact that the legacy infrastructure, um, or traditional infrastructure, I should use is probably a better term, uh, is just not suitable for cloud delivery, right? Um, you know, compute is the only tier that is, uh, that is, you know, virtualized or, you know, software defined, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and what that means is really that the automation framework, um, you know, can talk to it directly uh, through an API. In our case, was the um, you know the the, the vCenter API and manipulate um, manipulate those compute resources VMs basically uh, directly. Uh, that wasn't true for the rest of the infrastructure, not for networking, storage, firewalls, um, you know, and all of that. Uh, so, in the end of the day, uh, you know, we found, uh, you know, two things, that we can, uh, it can work to automate, um, you know, the provisioning for some, uh, uh, from some uh, simple use cases, uh, but, um, you know, it was not going to transform a, a large, complex, um, you know, traditional environment into a cloud environment. And, and by the way, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with the, uh, with the environment. It's, it's, uh, we're actually very proud of it. Uh, it is just, um, you know, it, it, it's not designed for, um, you know, for cloud delivery, right? Um, and this diagram here uh, kind of demonstrates what I, just, uh, what I just explained. So you have the, uh, you know, you have your silos at the bottom. Uh, you have uh, different silos have their own configuration tools. Uh, on top of that, you have a bunch of, uh, uh, you know, management tools that I just mentioned. And on top of that, you have the automation, uh, automation tool set. Um, and this integration that I was talking about is, you know, between the automation tool set and all of these different, uh, different tools that I was, uh, I was mentioning. So it's very complex. Uh, on top of that, uh, you have the, um, you know, the actual, uh, the actual workflows. Um, again, the complexity, uh, you know, the complexity and the kind of the, the issue, uh, the, 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 the challenges and limitations I mentioned are right here in this. Uh, you know, it's not really the automation tool set. It, it doesn't matter which one you, you know, you select. It could be, uh, you know, you pick them, right? Uh, VCloud, UCS director, um, uh, you know, different, uh, uh, different uh, uh, distributions of, you know, OpenStack-based tools, um, doesn't matter. Uh, you know, you're not going to, uh, kind of the fundamental problem is down here. You're not going to kind of, uh, solve the fundamental problem, the problem with the foundation uh, with, um, you know, something at the very uh, kind of the, uh, um, you, know, the, the, you know, the top floor of the building really, right? So um, this is the, uh, I'm not going to go through, through this. Uh, this, is the, this is what this uh, automated uh, workflows uh, um, look like, as I mentioned. Uh, if you're kind of up here, um, you know, you do that integration, uh, now you have to do workflows on top of it. Um, this, is, this is what a workflow looks like for, um, you know, just be building, a, um, you know, building a VM. Um, I'm not sure if uh, uh, Deruven is in the room. I, um, <laughs> hi. Uh, I, I, he, it's his slide. I shamelessly stole it. Uh, I just wanted to give him credit. Thanks, Deruven. Um, Okay, I'll get to that later. So, 
Anyway, uh, something else interesting, and that was really the very the most interesting thing that happened late in uh, late in 2014. Uh, you know, our discussions, our conversations with our um, you know friends from uh, uh, the development organizations uh, kind of started changing in this way. Uh, basically, uh, you know, for first time, and we're kind of surprised, and we shouldn't have been because we knew that was coming. But um, it, it changed to a point where they said, "Look, you know, we don't want to don't want you to kind of." Uh, uh, spoon feed us infrastructure, we want to give you access to services. Um, and we're going to provision our own infrastructure. And we have this specific, uh, specific use case, and uh, I, can't, uh, I can't disclose uh, uh, vendor names or product names, uh, but uh, the, the case was, uh, um, the, it was this. Basically, they said, look, it, it's a very large system. Um, the only way we can, uh, we can deploy it, we can manage it, is through cloud services. Uh, you just have no other way. We can point in this thing to, uh, uh, you know, the deployer to one of the existing, uh, uh, you know, the public hyperscalers like AWS or Azure. Um, we can point it to an OpenStack-based uh, private cloud uh, if you have one. Uh, but uh, the only way we can do it is through cloud services. Um, and by the way, we need the full scope. You don't just want uh, compute. We want to be able to, um, you know, uh, create uh, private VLANs, public VLANs. We want to be um, you know, want to do firewalls, load balancers, the whole thing. Um, and it, it has to be, it has to be self-serve, obviously. It has to be elastic, too, right? We're going to, um, you know, scale up and scale down. And we, uh, we, uh, uh, so we had two things going, right? On one hand, uh, you know, our uh, kind of current approach uh, was, you know, what I call a brownfield, trying to um, uh, sort of integrate an automation tool set within, within the, traditional environment, uh, and we kind of knew that this wasn't going to uh, get us to, uh, you know, cloud services anytime soon, uh, and we also knew that we wanted, uh, um, you know, we wanted cloud services. So, uh, basically, um, uh, the, uh, um, you know, the requirements were for, you know, something like this, and at best, uh, you know, what we could do with the, um, you know, with just automation in the traditional environment was this, which is, uh, you know, a bunch of kind of uh, pre-canned, uh, you know, use cases in a, uh, in a services catalog where, you know, you can go and select and build, which was, you know, which is pretty good, uh, but uh, it, was not, uh, it was not this. It was not cloud services, right? Uh, so the, uh, the result of all this was that, you know, we uh, kind of the only conclusion we could make is that we needed a, uh, we needed a fresh start. We needed to, um, you know, start looking at a, at a greenfield approach for, you know, how we built a, um, you know, a private cloud for, uh, and that's how we, we kicked off this POC. Uh, so the first off, uh, you know, uh, our design approach, uh, I already talked about a lot of this. Uh, you know, build on a greenfield with dedicated network security, you know, the entire infrastructure perfectly, uh, uh, purposely designed for, you know, for cloud delivery. And what this means is, um, you know, I, I tried to show on, on, this, uh, on this diagram here, uh, first of all, uh, you know, no silos, right? Um, uh, second, uh, the, 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 the cloud OS, uh, you know, has to uh, fully control the infrastructure. If you look at from the infrastructure perspective, the infrastructure has to um, give up all control, uh, uh, all control to the uh, you know to the cloud OS. Uh, very much the same way as if you you know if you deploy a bare metal OS on a you know on any server, you don't manage that hardware in any other way but through the you know through the operating you know Linux or whatever other uh, bare metal OS you deploy. Um, you know same same concept. Uh, and uh, the third is um, that um, any, um, you know, any services from that infrastructure, they can only be delivered through uh, cloud APIs. That's the reason I, I drew the whole thing circular, so there's no corners, you know, people can go around and, and say, hey, you know, I want infrastructure uh, some other way. You know, the only way it is through, um, you know, cloud services. So uh, remember I talked about uh, complicated, uh, you know, integration with enterprise tool set? Well, don't do it, and, or at least, you know, don't do it on the, um, on the cloud side, do it on the tenant side uh, through, uh, through the APIs. I'll, I'll talk about this a little bit uh, uh, in, a, in more detail a little bit later on. Um, the rest is just uh, really a definition of, of a cloud, you know, programming interfaces, full sets, you know, multi-tenant. Um, not going to spend a lot of time on that. Not that they're extremely important. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, they're, they're kind of self-evident, right? Um, 
talked about this. So uh, at a very high level, uh, this is what you know, we, we kind of envision the cloud would, uh, would look like, right? Uh, there will be uh, you know, two data centers, uh, east and west, um, two availability zones in each of, uh, uh, in each of data, the, these data centers completely independent. So these are basically you know, four, separate, uh, four separate clouds. Um, uh, you know, with their, uh, with their own uh, gateway, uh, there will obviously be a uh, um, high throughput, low latency um, connectivity between the, uh, the availability zones in the, um, in the same data center, um, you know, all connected through, um, you know, through our MPLS uh, backbone. Uh, this was uh, kind of uh, similar to what uh, this, this, uh, this large scale application, large scale service I mentioned. Uh, was kind of um, not kind of, but uh, you know, was uh, was part of their um, of, of their requirement as well. So, uh, this next uh, slide is a little bit more is a little bit more interesting uh, because it, it, it shows the relationship between uh, between the cloud and the tenants. So, um, you know, first off, uh, they you know, as you can see, they they um, they don't share. Uh, they don't share anything. The, the, the only way the tenants, uh, and, and these tenants, by the way, these are the you know, traditional, um, traditional IT environments that we uh, you know, would have in the, uh, in the organization. So um, the only way um, <clears throat> you know, the tenants can consume services uh, through the cloud uh, is through the cloud gateway. And um, you know, as it's kind of normal, you'd have a control plane, we have a data plane, your data plane would have the, you know, we'll do, um, if, if you have applications and services that span across, uh, you know, between the tenant and the cloud, uh, it will have your file transfer database queries, web queries, you know, RESTful APIs, uh, you know, all, all of that. Uh, the, the control plane would have your, uh, you know, would be uh, your, your cloud, cloud APIs, and that is really the only way uh, the, uh, uh, the tenant can request can, uh, services from, uh, from the cloud. Um, as I mentioned, uh, if, if you need to do, if you do, need to do any integration between um, enterprise, uh, enterprise tool set uh, and the cloud, uh, you have to do it on the tenant side. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend, you know, doing it on, on the cloud side. And it's no different than the way, uh, you know, any tenants any, uh, are treated by um, any of the existing, uh, you know, hyperscale cloud providers, right? Uh, they're not, if you, let's say you want to create something, uh, something like, a, like a VM or a VLAN, and we want that to be reflected, uh, you know, let's call it a configuration item, like it's in, in CMDB terms, and you want that to be reflected in your CMDB here, um, you are, you're not going to see, uh, uh, you know, support from your, uh, um, from your provider uh, other than, you know, what is available through, uh, you know, through their common, uh, common APIs. So if you want to do that integration, uh, do it here, you know, don't, don't clutter your cloud. So um, uh, you, you'll notice this, uh, uh, you know, NFV, uh, NFV managers here, and they're, you know, a bunch available from, uh, and we haven't made any selections, but they're a, a number available from, um, you know, from companies like, uh, like Ericsson, um, Huawei, um, uh, <laughs> Juniper, um, ALU, uh, so the reason I'm mentioning this is just, just going to go back to uh, a slide uh, over here. Uh, you can't plug those with, um, where do you go? Yeah, okay. Uh, to this, you can only plug it to this, right? So just to reinforce that, you know, just a bunch of pre-canned, um, you know, catalog items in the services catalog is just not going to do it. You need the, uh, we need the cloud services. All right. Okay, so now that we, we kind of knew what the, this uh, cloud is, uh, is going to look like, uh, it was time to, uh, you know, select some uh, technologies and partners. Um, you know, from partners' perspective, quite frankly, we, you know, we knew at the time that we, we couldn't do it alone. We needed, uh, we needed help. Uh, so we, uh, we partnered with, and, and, uh, and Michael and I are going to talk about this. Um, so first of all, uh, all from uh, a cloud management perspective, it was a very easy... Uh, you know, very easy decision, you know, wasn't, wasn't even under consideration that would be, you know, selecting anything else. Uh, OpenStack is, you know, widely adopted by the, um, you know, communications uh, uh, providers across, across the globe. Telus is, uh, Telus is no exception. Um, you know, we already committed 
uh, to OpenStack, uh, you know, for NAV and SDN. Uh, we already had some good experience with uh, OpenStack-based products. Um, it is the leading, um, you know, initiative, uh, open source initiative for, um, you know, cloud management. Um, as I said, an easy decision. Uh, we weren't going to do it alone. Uh, in terms of, you know, we're not, we were not going to have our, you know, sort of build our own distribution of, uh, of OpenStack. In this case, we decided to, uh, you know, partner with Red Hat. They're already a uh, strong partner of ours for, you know, OS and virtualization. Um, you know, we like their leadership in the OpenStack community, uh, their track record in, um, you know, delivering, uh, you know, enterprise class products, tools, uh, you know, within open, with an open source uh, business model. Um, so with that, I will hand it off to uh, Michael, who will uh, uh, cover the rest of our technology choices and the technical implementation of the uh, proof of concept. Right, thanks, Dimitarian. <clears throat> so for our compute and network infrastructure partner for our uh, proof of concept, or this proof of concept, uh, is Cisco. Uh, we have a wide uh, deployment of Cisco compute and converged infrastructure in a number of our data centers and environments. Uh, we have a proven uh, sense of enterprise reliability and scalability through those systems, and we have some familiarity. Uh, so it just makes uh, good sense. Um, <clears throat> Cisco also has a strong commitment to OpenStack. Uh, they have some reference architectures that are directly linked to uh, the FlexPod and specifically to the RDO distribution of OpenStack. And you can find those at this uh, link here. Our storage infrastructure that we are using for this proof of concept is NetApp. Um, uh, like Cisco, uh, Telus has a variety of NetApp uh, deployments in our data centers and environments. Um, again, like Cisco, they have a proven uh, flexibility and resiliency from an enterprise uh, level. We know that they have a strong leadership commitment to OpenStack. They're one of the first uh, contributors to the OpenStack code base. Um, and uh, like Cisco, they also have some uh, good reference architectures and, and tools for us to, to refer to to deploy. And given that we are uh, partnering with uh, NetApp and uh, Cisco, it just makes sense to uh, deploy our OpenStack to a FlexPod. There it is. Uh, in this case, we are using a Nexus 9K, two fabric and a Connects. Uh, we have a UCS chassis that is uh, filled with the eight blade servers, and we have a NetApp FAS controller with cluster data on tap. That cluster data on tap gives us uh, the base uh, things like continuous operations. Uh, they have that storage virtualization technology that uh, maps really well to OpenStack. Um, you know, they have the NetApp features. Uh, you know, other vendors have this too. Uh, some deduplication. Uh, NetApp has a mature Cinder driver. Uh, and there's the link to the reference architectures they have. And they also have a, a reference architecture that is specific to the FlexPod and the uh, Red Hat uh, distribution of OpenStack. These slides will be available. You can get them later. Uh, no, no, no. Take, take the pictures. <laughs> oh, a selfie. You got a selfie. Yeah. I see, I see. Okay. Um, the the uh, NetApp array was pretty straightforward to set up. Uh, you know, uh, they have a, uh, a nice GUI that you can go into. And uh, here I just took a, a screen grab of uh, where we're setting up the storage virtual machines. Uh, we can apply some of the NetApp features, uh, you know, the thin provisioning and deduplication to the uh, volumes that you're providing up to uh, OpenStack. Uh, the storage virtual machines, uh, we do, we do uh, you know, just in this uh, proof of concept, it does provide a nice sense of, uh, of isolation against other tenants that we may later put on there, and that's sort of our, uh, the method that we're going to use for uh, multi-tenancy when we, when we get to that point. Um, and then there's also a similar GUI for uh, setting up the UCS chassis. Um, one feature that I really like about the UCS chassis and the UCS system for, in particular, I mean, I know it's good for, uh, um, you know, in general production operations, is that they have this idea of the stateless uh, compute, where every blade server is provisioned via a mechanism of a, of a service profile. So the service profile has something like, I don't know, 96 uh, unique, uh, uniquely identifiable configuration points that you can just apply to a blade when you put it into your uh, chassis. And for a proof of concept, that's uh, very nice because you can set up different uh, service profiles and apply them to the blades as your needs change. And I, and I show these uh, GUIs, uh, but once you have your environment set up and OpenStack is running, you wouldn't return to these GUIs. You know, it's not something you have to continually return to to keep your environment up and running. Um, you know, uh, after the setup, um, all of the provisioning and configuration that you'll be doing will be through OpenStack. 
Um, the partnership, the uh, consulting that we had with Red Hat was uh, quite useful for us. Uh, they spent a, a good deal of time with us. They, they came and did a planning session where we did all of the uh, sort of hardware layout and uh, logical network designs. Uh, we did everything from setting up uh, which VLANs and subnets we're going to use all the way down to uh, host names and what nodes are going to go on which server. Um, and then after our planning session, they came back and spent uh, five days with us. I mean, I guess that's a rapid deployment of OpenStack. I don't know. Um, <laughs> But we spent five days uh, setting up the OpenStack and we uh, went through and we did a, a validation that everything was up and running and doing what it needed to do. And at the end of it, they provided us with a nice little um, rebuild recipe that we can, uh, you know, we have our own sort of uh, reference uh, design guide now. Um, I should mention that we use for our install Packstack. Um, I guess the other option would have been to use the uh, RHEL OSP, uh, but we wanted to do rapid Deployment, so we use Puppet, and of course that provided us a bunch of uh, modules that we can refer to and tinker with and modify as we go. And now that we have our OpenStack environment up and running, uh, we can begin to explore um, and provide to some of our other internal teams their epochs. You know, I know that there's a team at Telus that are interested in uh, platform as a service. Uh, so it would be nice for us to kind of explore uh, paths with them. Um, I know that our security team is quite interested to see how we're going to uh, merge and use OpenStack within the Telus environment. You know, as I begin to kind of show this environment out to our uh, enterprise network, uh, how am I going to uh, ensure that I'm not doing uh, terrible things? Uh, we have a mandate to uh, work on NFE and SDN. And then uh, finally, we're going to be working with the, uh, I guess it's not NetApp's middle of file share service, but we're going to explore some of the uh, other storage features that are available. And I think uh, with that, I'll hand it back over to uh, Dimitar to talk about some of the more meta next steps for Telus. Right, right. Thanks, Michael. All right, so uh, quickly, on, uh, quickly on next steps. So these, uh, I, as you can see, there's, uh, there's a lot of work ahead of, ahead of us. So, uh, you know, priority number one will be these, uh, these two. We gotta, we gotta figure out, you know, what our, what our uh, cloud gateways are gonna look like. Remember, you know, on, this, uh, on the slide I talked about uh, before, I talked about, uh, uh, you know, control plane and data plane and, um, you know, the firewalls. And so there's a lot of work to be done there um, with our uh, partners from networking security. Um, um, the same um, uh, goes for the, for the next item, the, uh, the multi-tenancy, multi-tenant capabilities, how we do the tenant isolation, how we apply the, um, the security controls uh, within, the, within the environment. Um, and, uh, you know, service assurance capabilities, uh, building our own uh, internal capabilities to be able to manage uh, clouds, you know, uh, 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 you know, cloud capacity management practice, um, you know, financial model, uh, you know, how, you know, what are we going to do, uh, chargeback, showback, uh, you know, how we're going to meter, how we're going to, uh, you know, do uh, uh, charging, billing, uh, you know, when you, when you get to that, uh, to that point. Um, so, um, some some lessons learned here in the in a forms of uh, you know things that you, you know from uh, take these to the grain of a grain of salt. By the way, um, it, this is based on based on our experience. Your environment might be different. Um, you know, you can. But uh, you know, I already talked about um, uh, you know many of those. Don't don't try. Uh, you know, to, uh, if you want to deliver cloud services, don't try to uh, uh, try to transform a traditional IT uh, environment uh, into that. Uh, you can you can still do and make sense to the automation in that uh, in that uh, uh, traditional um, IT environment. Um, just be realistic. Uh, you know what kind of expectations you would we would gonna uh, kind of have from from that effort. Uh, if you want to do um, you know cloud services, if if the Kind of if your environment is as uh, kind of complex as, as ours, um, you know, I would I would just start on a you know on a green field. Um, I already mentioned about the tools. Don't try to try the integration on the cloud side if you have to do it. Uh, you know, do it on the on the tenant side. Um, don't do it alone. You know, you, you probably could. Uh, it, it, it's just not. Uh, it, it's just not worth the um, kind of the time and effort. Um, you, you know, we, we don't have. Um, our experience with, uh, you know, partners was, uh, um, you know, was great. Um, you, you know, um, find partners who are, you know, motivated to be working with you, investing with you. Uh, similarly, with your, you know, within the, um, uh, the internal, your, organi uh, your internal organization, don't work in isolation. Um, you know, find partners, find uh, uh, 
uh, sponsors and supporters. Um, on the, um, we tried this, uh, you know, that we'll build it and they'll come approach. Uh, it didn't work for us. Uh, you know, it's, it's uh, much better if you find real use cases that will be, uh, you know, serve, uh, serve, well by, uh, serve well by cloud delivery. Um, and now um, I'm uh, shifting gears here a little bit uh, away from the, from the POC. So we, we're kind of uh, coming to these conferences. We're told that, hey, this is our, this is our chance to uh, uh, kind of voice your opinion of kind of what do you want, what are you, kind of what are you asking uh, for from this, uh, um, um, you, you know, for the community, uh, kind of which direction is going to go. And um, so is, is OpenStack the next, uh, the next game changer? Um, I, I, certainly, I certainly think so. And, um, uh, you know, he, here's my uh, kind of my criteria. It, you might have a different one, but that, that's what kind of serves me well to kind of see if something is a, uh, something is a big thing, if it's, a, uh, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to set a trend for a long time. Uh, you know, first off, does it solve a very large problem? Uh, next, you know, is it, uh, does it have the, you know, the functionality that is required? Um, does it hide a lot, of, uh, a lot of complexity compared to the complexities, uh, you know, that's being added? Uh, you, you know, do you, does it, is it high, uh, does it have high level of usability? Uh, and what I mean by usability is, you know, easy to access, easy to deploy, easy to use, you know, it's stable, it's operationally, uh, operationally sound. Um, you know, it's nice to be low cost and again, in relative terms, um, you know, and, and lastly, uh, has a wide industry support, uh, both from, uh, you know, tech providers and uh, as well as uh, tech consumers. And uh, Linux and Unix are kind of the, the uh, a prime example of, uh, 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 you know, for uh, kind of being a game, game changer. Um, you know, first, uh, you know, Linux, uh, uh, Linux uh, you know, solved the problem. Uh, and uh, which problem it solved was the, you know, the problem of uh, basically, um, you know, abstracting the, uh, um, abstracting the, uh, the computer, right? The single computer, you know, pr providing a programmatic, uh, pr programmatic interface uh, to, uh, you know, to a single, to a single computer. Then, uh, you know, what Linux did is uh, through kind of reinvented that through open source and lowered the barrier to entry uh, for, you know, any for anyone uh, to be able to kind of afford, uh, uh, you know, in use computing. I mean. Uh, literally not just organizations, but, but even individuals, right? And um, OpenStack kind of could, uh, could be on the verge of doing, uh, doing the same for, for the entire infrastructure stack, right? Uh, you know, first uh, AWS, Azure, uh, kind of solved the problem, invented the uh, software data center or, you know, cloud OS, data, data center OS, whatever you want to call it. You know, so now OpenStack, uh, through open source, is... Um, I think it's kind of poised to lower that barrier to entry uh, again at, at that level, at that scope, uh, to make that easy, uh, uh, you know, af av uh, uh, available, affordable to, uh, to, to everyone. And um, um, uh, you know, software defined. We talked a lot about software defined. Uh, you know, I, I just uh, I just threw this out there. Um, I hope uh, you know nobody's going to be offended because this is this is really uh, basic. But uh, kind of speaking with uh, with uh, people for the last uh, for the last couple of days, um, you know, I, I don't think it's it's really uh, not so much that it's not understood, but I think it's uh, it's kind of watered down a little bit, uh, and it really is uh, y you know it really is this simple. Um, you know, similar to the way uh, Linux abstracts the, you know, computer hardware. So you can, you know, you can manage uh, processes, files, uh, network connections, users, and so forth and so on through a single programmatic interface. Doesn't matter what hardware you have, uh, you know, which, uh, which the CPU you're using, uh, you know, which vendor, um, you know, built it and all that. Uh, OpenStack is, uh, is going to do the same for, you know, the end-to-end -end -to -end infrastructure in the entire uh, data center. It's, it's not going to do it. it it's already uh, it's already doing it, right? So you can um, you can manage uh, your VMs, you manage storage. Uh, you know, again, programmatically through uh, an open standard 
uh, 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 standard interface. So this is extremely, the, the reason I, I put it out there because this is, uh, uh, you know, uh, in my mind, this is, you know, extremely, uh, extremely powerful. Um, you know, when you, I think it was the gentleman from uh, PayPal uh, yesterday, the keynote, who said the only thing that is between my uh, infrastructure and my developers, um, you know, is the, uh, is our APIs, right? And if you give a bunch of, uh, uh, you know, solid APIs to, uh, you know, to a bunch of developers, um, you know, wonderful things uh, are going to happen. And this is really uh, kind of why this is, uh, this is as powerful as it is. All right, so um, can OpenStack do this and do we care? And so what is this? It's, a, you know, it's an adoption curve, uh, um, you know, kind of which is typical for these game changers, uh, you know, and as you can see, uh, there's, there's a lot of work that needs to happen in terms of adding, you know, function, functionality and usability, maturity, if you will, uh, you know, for a relatively kind of low level of adoption. And at some point, uh, you know, over here, something happens all of a sudden, it, 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 kind, of, uh, it kind of explodes. Um, everybody starts doing it, everybody starts, uh, starts using it. And, um, uh, and uh, you know, and so why, why do we care about this, right? If, if OpenStack is gonna go to, to this point, if, you know, if we're at this conference, I believe, uh, you know, uh, and I think all of us believe that um, um, the only way, well, it, can, it won't be maybe the only way, but uh, uh, moving forward, infrastructure is going to be delivered in, in a way that it can be, uh, it, be, it can be consumed through these programmatic uh, interfaces through, uh, you know, through cloud services. And this, uh, and this line here, that is the divider, uh, you know, between the, the haves on this side and the have-nots on this side, right? And, and over here, uh, you know, you, you would have, uh, uh, you know, Amazon and Microsoft and, and VMware perhaps, and over here, you know, is the rest of us behind this, you know, uh, OpenStack uh, community. Uh, trying to, uh, you know, trying to catch up. Uh, and this is why it matters, uh, you know, for us to kind of as a community to help, uh, to help uh, you know, push OpenStack, uh, you know, through this, uh, um, uh, uh, through this point, uh, so it really becomes, uh, you know, functional, usable, uh, you know, stable, operational, ready, uh, and it's, you know, it's easy for, uh, you know, for us to uh, not only consume the uh, resources, it's already, um, it's already uh, easy enough, but to um, also um, uh, be able to, you know, to manage it uh, properly and deploy it easily. Um, so, and we, um, you know, how can we help, right? We all have different roles in the, in the community, uh, and um, I will just, we're running out of time, so I'll just uh, um, touch base on the, um, uh, you know, uh, the developers here. Uh, you know, more functionality is great, but uh, we need to, we really need to focus on usability. Make it, make it easy to use, easy to deploy, uh, you know, easy to manage. Uh, at this point, if you ask me if I, you know, if I have to choose between, between the two, uh, at this point I would, uh, I would, I would use more uh, usability, more accessibility. Um, for the technology providers, a very, you know, a very similar technology providers, they, um, you know, they hire a lot of these uh, developers here, so uh, you guys can also help with, uh, you know, driving this, uh, um, you know, OpenStack towards being, uh, being more stable, more mature, uh, you know, easy to deploy, easy to manage. Um, you know, for service providers, uh, internal, external, doesn't matter. Uh, you know, if you haven't started that, get going. Uh, you know, and if you, if you already have started, just, just don't give up. It, it's hard, it's difficult, uh, but, uh, uh, you, you know, keep driving. Um, you know, voice your ask, conferences like this, you know, talk to your, uh, um, you know, talk to your vendors, talk to your providers, uh, make sure that they, um, uh, they hear you. And for infrastructure professionals, software developers, um, if you guys are already at the conference, you, you know, you figured it out, you're already doing it, um, you know, keep doing it. And, um, this is, the, uh, this is the end of our talk. Um, tell us, uh, the future is friendly. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I don't know if you have a minute for you know, a question or two. Uh, if we don't. One, one question. <laughs> uh, if we don't, uh, these are our contacts. Uh, Michael and I will be happy to you know, talk to you guys um, um, offline, share more experience.
after the setup. Uh, setup. During the setup, we, uh, we, we had some struggles. Right, but uh, with, VLANs. Yep, uh, we, we now have, uh, through our uh, deployment, uh, great availability. I think, I think that the, uh, the post-build experience is, is quite good. It's the getting there that you really, we really did lean heavily on our Red Hat expertise to get that going. Um, and again, um, you know, we do, I'm sure if you uh, go to the Red Hat site or contact your Red Hat uh, consultancy, they can uh, provide you some more deeper detail. And, and, you know, like say, they did provide us with uh, you know, a stack of documentation of how we got that to go. Um, attempting to do it myself, I, I failed. So, there's that. All right, thank you. All right, thanks everyone.